Hi everyone and welcome back to the Knit California channel. My name is Leslie, I'm Knit California here on YouTube and also over on Instagram and TikTok and today I'm giving you an update on my 2024 knitting journal. a video a couple weeks ago walking you through how I was setting up my 2024 knitting journal and since then I have I think fully completed the setup and I have some changes compared to what I originally talked about and so I wanted to walk through those with you. I'm gonna do a top-down view so you can see all of this but I'm really excited about my sticker page. <laughs> I've got my project pages in here finally and my monthly since we are almost a week into the new year you will see um, a little bit of me actually keeping track of what's going on in the new year. So I am going to switch over to the top down view so that you can see what I'm talking about and I'll share with you uh, the new and improved layout of my 2024 knitting journal. This is an update on my 2024 knitting journal. I like to use the front and back cover pages and like first couple pages in here uh, to put stickers in that I accumulate throughout the year. I have been accumulating stickers since the end of 2023 that I knew I wanted to save for my 2024 journal and I finally uh, had a chance to put them all in and get my cover page figured out. So I'm loving how this is looking. It's always really fun to like flip open the first page and see all of this color and fun from all the stickers. I'm using the second page as like brand specific stickers that I get from places when I buy yarn or whatever. They send a sticker so I'm gonna keep put them all here and probably have them carry over to the next couple of uh, blank pages in here. I kept the table of contents page in here this year so that I could write down the table of contents. I did not keep this in last year's journal and I just wanted to see if I would use it this year. We'll see how it goes. Another blank page and then we get to my 2024 calendar. I'm going to use this as like an at a glance calendar to see when my holidays are, my long weekends, and any trips that we plan. You can see the uh, October Irish Knitting Tour I already have blocked off in October. More information on that is in the description box down below. Then we come into my specific knitting specific pages. The first one is project list at a glance. I carried over all of my whips that I'm bringing into 2024. I've got the name of each pattern, the start date, and I will include the date that I finish it. I have already cast on one new item in 2024, the Cal Cardigan, uh, on January 4th, so I was able to add that onto my list. This is a really nice page just to see all of your projects, everything that you started in a year. If you don't finish it, you know, obviously this finish line will be blank. If I frog something, I'm going to write frogged. If that's pretty much it. If I finish it, if it's a whip at the end or if it's frogged, <laughs> that's uh, where it ends up. And it's just exciting and like interesting to see as time goes on. Uh, what projects you've started and what got finished. The next page is my yarn purchases and plans. So anytime I purchase yarn, I'm going to write it down here and then what the plan is, what sweater or whatever project I have planned for it, I want to make a note here. I found that with a lot of like pre-orders that I was ordering from, by the time I would get the yarn after 10 to 12 to 15 weeks of waiting, I would forget sometimes what my original thought was for like what I wanted to make with that yarn. So I added this into my 2023 journal towards the back half of the year and I found it super helpful. Also, I'm really proud of myself. We're on January 6th. I haven't bought any yarn yet this year. <laughs> Yay. Okay, next is my 2024 closet. 
my plan for this spread is every time I have a finished object that is specifically for me, I'm going to take my finished object photo, print it out with a mini sticker printer. This is the Canon Ivy. Uh, I have a link for this from Amazon in the description box down below. It prints out on sticker, like photo paper, like this. This is a quarter of the size. And I can stick all of my photos in here of my finished objects for the closet that I'm creating in 2024. If you don't have um, like a photo paper or you don't wanna take photos, you can always like draw pictures of what you create. Um, and I think that would be really awesome too. Next are my social media pages. So the first side is Instagram, the next side is YouTube, and down at the bottom I've got TikTok. Uh, my plan, my hope, my dream, my goal is to keep growing my Instagram and my YouTube channel this year. So what I'm doing is I'm tracking major milestones. Um, as I reach a milestone, I will then fill out the next box. I didn't really know at the beginning of the year what I wanted the end goals to be. So I do kind of have that figured out now. I could fill out the whole grid, but it's kind of fun to leave it this way. And so you can see once I reach a goal, I can color in that box and add the date that I reached it in. I really didn't think I was going to hit these two milestones still uh, at the end of 2023, but I did. And so we're leaving them in there. And these are what I'm considering like my starting points for 2024. And then for TikTok down here, I'm not really like... I don't really have a goal to grow my TikTok channel. Um, I'm just going to track my number of followers uh, at the end of each month. Okay, this is something really fun. So if you watch my original video, I had my bookshelf here. I was going to be tracking my books. I decided to get a completely separate journal to track my books and to do like, you know, normal journaling stuff in. And so I wanted to change this page and I changed it to my 2024 Knitters Bingo. I just went on Canva and I created this simple list of knitting related tasks or projects that I will likely finish in 2024 and I made this bingo card so you can see knit a pullover, knit a cardigan, knit a tee, frog a project, use stash yarn purchased in these different years, learn a new craft, just fun things like this and every time I complete one of these I'm gonna figure out a way to track them all over here. Uh, I might, I've been thinking about printing out like another copy of this um, so that I can cross them off on one side but keep one so you can see what each of the boxes are. I haven't figured out how I'm gonna track it but that's gonna go here. And I'm excited for this. I think it'll be a really fun little challenge uh, throughout the year. Next is my Make 9. So what I did, these are um, the photos from the Canon IV photo printer that I stuck in here. I just put four on one sheet and then cut them out to this size. But these are the nine patterns on my Make 9 for this year that I would like to complete. So I've got them all laid out over here. And then on this side, when if slash when I complete any of them, I'm going to put my finished object photo over here. And so hopefully by the end of the year, this will all be completed. <laughs> we'll see. Next are my goals. So the left side is my like Knit California business goals. And the right side is what I'm calling my crafty girl goal goal <laughs> crafty girl goals. Um, everything to do with my own like knitting, learning new crafts, my yarn stash, wearing my FOs, and really the overall goal to have fun. I'm going to have a whole video talking about all of these, so I don't necessarily want to go uh, full deep into them right now. But those are all of my yearly knitting pages, and then we come into the monthly pages. So starting with January, this is just a January calendar. What I like to do on my calendar pages is just write down one thing that happened every single day so I can kind of remember like what was going on uh, every day during the month. 
Sometimes they are knitting related and sometimes they are not knitting related. But since this is my knitting journal, if I do have any like knitting related milestones, like finishing the sleeve, finishing the yoke, finishing a project, this is where um, I'll be able to track that. Next up, uh, the next page is my knits wear spread. This is where I keep track every single day if I wore one of my knits. And what I do is I just, you know, check if it's a yes, I'll put an X if it's a no, and then I write down what piece of knitwear I wore that day. At the end of the month, I will count up how many times I wore a knit, how many checks I have for yes, and I'll also do a tally of each specific garment so that I can say like, okay, I wore my cal cardigan two times, my Oslo sweater two times, and my clove sweater one time. Uh, towards the end of the year, I then take all of this info and I transfer it into a spreadsheet on uh, Google Sheets so I can create some charts and just look at the trends in wearing my knitwear. I have a whole video on this where I analyzed my knitwear patterns from 2023, so you can go ahead and watch that if you're interested. The next page is my socials. This is where I keep track of any brand partnerships that I have during the month, any Instagram or TikTok video ideas or post ideas, and YouTube video ideas. I am pretty stacked right now with ideas for the month of January. We'll see how many of these I actually get done, but it would be fun to get through all of them. Lastly, for my monthly spreads, I've got my January month at a glance where I have my projects ongoing and started. This queue, uh, it sometimes fluctuates between like a queue, like things that I want to cast on and just like patterns or yarns that I really can't get out of my head and I need to just like write it down because I'm so obsessed with it right now. Um, right now it's a bunch of patterns from my Make 9 that I would really love to cast on plus a cardigan that's not on my Make 9 but I really want to knit more cardigans this year so that's the one uh, that I have actually cast on so far this year. Then I have a section for projects finished. I really don't finish that many projects in a month, so that's why uh, the space is pretty small. And then my yarn stash in and out tracker. I haven't bought any yarn yet this year, which is good, although I do think I have a delivery arriving later today. So once that arrives, I can write it in here. And then next is my weekly snapshot. So every week I can write down what my like mini goals are for that week. For example, I wanted to finish sleeve one of my stick season sweater and I did finish that this week and I'm working on sleeve two. Once I finish sleeve two, uh, the sweater will be done and then I can block it. I also um, ended up swatching my Cushendale boucle yarn that wasn't originally on the list, but I did it, so I wrote it down and I checked it off. Same with cast on my cow cardigan, wasn't it originally on the list, but I did it and I checked it off. And I would like to swatch for my cove sweater, um, so I wrote that down here. I also keep track of what YouTube videos I posted or filmed that week on this side of the page. Okay, I've got a, a bunch of blank pages. Uh, left here for the rest of the months. I counted out exactly how many pages I was going to need. I haven't outlined these yet because I didn't want, I didn't, I didn't want to. <laughs> I was over drawing all the lines, so I needed a break. Um, but in the middle of my notebook is where I'm going to keep track of my 2024 projects. These are going to be all my specific project pages. So I just decorated this with some washi tape and some knitting specific stickers that I really liked. For some reason, I skipped the first page, which really annoys me, so I'm going to have to cast something else on uh, <laughs> to fill out the first page. But then what I'm doing is, let's see, let me go to the one that I actually started. I had a burst of inspiration, wanted to start swatching a whole bunch of things this week, and one of them stuck. So this is my Cal Cardigan by Claire Jackson. Let me just give you a little sneak peek here so you can see that I actually cast this on. 
but what I did was I cut out the yarn label. So the yarn is from Bella Filato Studio. The name is Cozy Flannel in the Bella Worsted base. You can see all the information here. I started it on January 4th, and since this is actually a project, a knit that I have already complete before, I went back to my page from my 2023 journal, and I just found uh, that previously I knitted on 5mm needles. The yarn is pretty much the same as the yarn that I used before, so I didn't swatch and I just went straight to casting on using 5 millimeter, millimeter needles and I'm knitting up the size 4. In the pattern, um, each of the sizes is like has its own color in the instructions, so the color for size 4 is all purple text, so that's why I wrote purple there. Okay, I got a ton. I think I saved like 50 pages for project notes in here. I completed about 40 projects this year, so I figured 50 pages was probably enough. And now I have a note section. Again, I just decorated this with some washi tape and some knitting related stickers. I don't have any notes in here yet, but you know, if I want to write down notes for like video ideas or like knitting math or whatever I want notes for, I have uh, a section here. And then last but not least, at the very end of my journal, I wanted to add a couple extra pages. Uh, I really, it would have been nice to have these at the beginning, but these are all pages that I have since thought about and decided to add in. Uh, since I completed the beginning of the journal and started the monthly pages right after the yearly pages. So they're ending up at the back of the journal. What I've got here are skills learned and improved. So this was actually an idea that someone uh, left a comment on my last knitting journal video. And thank you so much for leaving that comment because I think this is a really good idea. So anytime I learn a new skill or I feel like I'm leveling up in any of my skills, I can keep track of that here. This was also an idea from the same person was to keep a list of any gift knits. Um, I really like this because I did do a lot of gift knitting last year and I could go back and make a list of it, but it'll be nice to just have it all in one spot. Then I have basically my 2024 year end pages. So um, I just took these ideas from what I've been working on for 2023 year end basically. So did I meet my 2024 goals? my 2024 knitwear tracker and any notes that I have about that, which goes into, did I wear my knits in 2024? I ended up needing like three or four pages for all of those notes in 2023. So that's why I have two pages in here for that. And then lastly, my 2024 year end stats and my favorites, what my favorite knits were throughout the year. So there we go that's the end these back pages i'm sure will all be covered in stickers by the end of the year and i'm really excited about this journal all right so that was it i hope you enjoyed seeing that look um i'm just gonna give you uh some basic updates about the tools the notebook everything that i used this was all in the previous video so if you've already seen it you can skip ahead or skip out to the end um, but just so that you know the notebook that i'm using is called the lectrum 1917 i don't think i'm pronouncing it correctly it is a german word that means lighthouse which if you really think about it naming a journal lighthouse um, is a really nice description i think I have a pencil case here filled with pens and markers. You always need a pencil. You always need a ruler. I'm sure you have all of those. I've been using these pens. These are the Jetstream Uni 0 0.7 pen in case you're looking for a new everyday pen. And then the markers that I use that you will have seen are these they're called the zebra 
the Zebra Mild Liners. And they come in like a pack of 12 or whatever this is. And they're double sided so one side has like the highlighter tip and one side has the fine tip. And then other than that, I just used uh, all of these washi tapes that I've literally had for years. I think I got them at Michael's, most of them. And my pack of stickers that I have been collecting for also years and years and years. So. If you're interested in setting up your own knitting journal, use what you've got. You don't need to go out and buy a whole ton of new, you know, tapes and stickers and supplies. What I like to do with my stickers that you saw is like as I get stickers throughout the year from like yarn festivals or from yarn brands, sometimes they're included when you order yarn from places, that's really when I start to fill up my journal. I did have all of these stickers picked out um, like at the end of 2023 that I knew I wanted to include in my 2024 notebook so I've been saving them for this and that's why my sticker page is fully set up. I don't think I set up my 2023 sticker page like fully until like halfway through the year. You can see I've got some similar ones in here. I really like my ones in the back. I ordered this like pack of Emily Henry book stickers after I finished all the Emily Henry books. So they don't all need to be yarn related. Again, do whatever you like. I will have all of the products that I used and that I had purchased from Amazon linked in the description box down below in case you're interested in checking out any of those. And that really is it. Um, I really hope that this video can provide some inspiration for you if you're planning on starting your own knitting journal in the new year. And um, if not, I just hope it was fun and interesting to see. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you on the next one. Bye.